What is somatic hybridization? Somatic hybridization is a technique which allows the manipulations of cellular genome by protoplast fusion. Its major contributions to plant breeding is in overcoming common crossing barriers among plants, species, in organelles, genetics and breeding. Somatic hybridization, also known as protoplast fusion, is the development of hybrid plant through the fusion of somatic protoplasts of two different plant species or varieties and such hybrids are known as somatic hybrids. What is protoplast? Protoplast, also known as naked plant cell, refers to all components of plant cell excluding cell wall. Protoplast term was proposed by Hanstein in 1880 which refers to entire cell excluding cell wall. The best known example of protoplast fusion is somatic hybrid of potato and tomato forming new hybrids called as pomato. Pomato was first created in the late 1970s. The idea of pomato plant was conceptualized by Oscar Soderholm in 1930 and later in 1977, this plant is initially developed by the Max Planck Institute Germany. This new hybrid plant has both characteristics of tomato and potato. Somatic hybridization has opened new possibilities for in vitro genetic manipulations of plant to improve the crops for better quality plant. Somatic hybridization have transferred disease resistant gene from one species to another species. For example, resistant gene have been introduced in tomato against disease like tobacco mosaic virus, spotted virus, and insect pests. Another advantage is producing crop with environmental tolerance. Some environmental factors like cold, frost, and salt also pose a challenge for crops. The gene for tolerance have been successfully introduced through somatic hybridization. There are five major techniques in somatic hybridization including isolations of protoplasts fusions of protoplasts of desired species or varieties, identifications and selections of somatic hybridization cell, culture of the hybrid cells, and regenerations of hybrid plant. Hi, my name is Riza Izwani. In this video, I will present about the isolation of protoplasts. There are two methods of protoplast isolation which are mechanical method and enzymatic method. In mechanical method, highly vacuolated cells of storage tissues such as onion bulb scales, radish root and beetroot tissue could be used for isolation. This method is generally rarely used and not followed because of certain disadvantages which will be discussed later in this video. The second method is enzymatic method. In this method, protoplasts can be isolated from a variety of tissues and organs such as leaf, petioles, fruits, roots, stem, coleoptiles, and etc. This method is widely used than the mechanical method. Now, let's learn about the mechanical method. Mechanical method of protoplast isolation is first done by Klescher in 1892. The steps are done by selecting small piece of epidermis from plant. Then, the cells is subjected to plasmolysis. In this step, the tissue is immersed in one molar sucrose solution until protoplasm shrunk away from their enclosing wall. Next, the cells is dissected and deplasmolyze to release protoplasts. 
In this step, the tissue is cut with a sharp knife. Eventually, the protoplasm now can be collected. Now, here comes the limitations of mechanical method. First, this method is confined to only certain tissues which have large vacuolated cells such as onion bulb scales, radish and beetroot tissues. Second, the yield of protoplast is very low. Third, the method is laborious, tedious and time-consuming. Fourth, due to the presence of substances released by damaged cells, the viability of protoplast is low. Now, let's learn about the enzymatic method. Before we move on, we must know that plant cell wall is composed of cellulose, hemicellulose, and pectin, which can be degraded by enzyme cellulase, hemicellulase, and pectinase. The enzymatic isolation of protoplasts can be performed in two different methods. First is direct method, also known as one-step method. Second is sequential method, also known as two-step method. Let's move to direct method. This method of protoplast isolation was first used by Power and Cocking in 1960. This is one-step procedure in which both enzymes are used together to reduce time. The protoplast isolated directly from the tissue using two enzymes simultaneously. The steps are first, incubation of leaf segments overnight in enzyme solution. Then, the mixture is filtered and centrifuge. Then, the protoplast will form pellet, eventually washed with sorbitol and recentrifuge. The clear protoplast will floating around. Then, the protoplast will be pipetted up. For the sequential method, this method was first used by Stuckabit et al. in 1968. The mesurated tissue is first incubated with macroenzyme or pectinase to separate cell by degrading middle lamella. Free cells are then treated with cellulase which degrade cellulosic cell wall for liberation of protoplasts. In general, the cells are exposed to different enzymes for shorter periods. Hi, my name is Aofa Amatullah bin Timur Yazid and I will explain about protoplast fusion. What is protoplast fusion? Protoplast fusion refers to the fusion of protoplasts from different genomes. Two known protoplast fusion techniques are spontaneous fusion, which is a natural process, and induced fusion, utilizing fusion inducing factors. Spontaneous fusion Adjoining protoplasts may fuse to form homocaryocytes or homocaryons. High number of nuclei ranging between 2 to 40 might occur in some few cells. The frequency formation of homocaryons was observed to increase in protoplasts isolated from dividing cultured cells. Intraspecific fusion produces homocaryons, while interspecific slash intergenic fusion have no importance. There are three types of induced fusion. The first one is electrofusion, using low strength of electric field around 100 kV per meter. Mechanical fusion using micro manipulator and protrusion micro pipette. The result will be observed under microscope. The last one is chemical fusion using polyethylene glycol (PEG), concentrated calcium ions or pH, or sodium nitrate. Electrofusion. It is the application of electrical stimulant where the frequency of fusion can reach up to 100%. It is easy to control, less cytotoxic, and allows reproducibility. However, the downside of this method are it is expensive and requires sophisticated instrument. Mechanical fusion. Isolated protoplasts are brought close together into physical contact mechanically using machines. The machines are as shown in the slide. Chemical fusion. This technique causes the isolated protoplasts to adhere to each other. It is not specific, inexpensive, and can produce massive fusion products. However, it is also cytotoxic and yields low fusion frequency. The first type of chemical fusion is PEG treatment, where it is one of the most effective methods. 
cells are treated with around 30% of PEG that binds the plasma membrane. The second one is high pH and calcium ion treatment. The protoplasts are treated in either one of the solution, high pH or calcium ion treatment. But due to its extreme conditions, it is proved to be toxic to certain protoplasts. The last one is sodium nitrate. It is first reported in 1970. The cells will be incubated together with the mixture of sodium nitrate and sucrose for about 5 minutes at 35 degrees Celsius and centrifuge. There are two possible fusion products. The first one is cybrid. It occurs when only one cytoplasm fuses and genetic information from one of the nuclei is lost. The second one is hybrid. It occurs when two nuclei fuse. These are the uses for protoplast fusion. First, it is used to combine two complete genomes. Another way is to create a low polyploids. Next, in vitro fertilization, genetic engineering such as microinjection, electroporation, and agrobacteria, transfer of organelles that is unique to protoplast fusion, the transfer of mitochondria slash chloroplast between species. And the last one is partial genome transfer, exchange single or few traits between species. It is may or may not require ionizing radiation. Hello everyone, my name is Izato Afika binti Abdul Razak. So now I'm going to continue the next technique involved in somatic hybridization. After fusion of protoplasts, the next step is the identification and selection of somatic cells hybrids. Hybrid identification is important in order to differentiate based on the differences between the parental cells and the hybrid cells. They are different in their pigmentations, cytoplasmic markers, presence of protoplasts and nuclear staining. Meanwhile, the selection of somatic hybrid cells is due to the protoplast population that consists of heterogeneous mixture with the unfused chloroplast known as homocarins. The one that we need to select here is the heterocarin, which is the hybrid cells. These selections can be done by using herbicide, genetic complementations, visual markers, chromosomal analysis, and the antibiotics. And also the others such as phytotoxin, specific amino acid, and auxin autotrophic. How we are going to detect the somatic habit? There are two methods that can be used. The first method is the screening method. The general flow of this method are shown as follows. The A protoplast parent give plant which can resist to the herbicide H8. The ones or the pre-parent regenerate platelet which can grow on the medium containing the herbicide HP. After fusion treatment, Protoplasts are transferred on a medium which contains HA and HP. We need to remember that only fused protoplasts can survive. Later on, hybrid Kelly and the hybrid platelets are able to develop on this toxic herbicide A and B containing medium. Second method is flow cytometry method. It is based on the protoplast fluorescence. Chloroplasts which are lighted by a blue light laser will give a red fluorescence. Only one parents which involve in the hybridizations will have the chloroplasts. Meanwhile, the second parent will emit the green fluorescein to fluorescein diacetate, which is the FDE, will absorb by the photoplasts. The red and green fluorescent are emitted simultaneously by the protoplasts. Each protoplast goes one by one through a window of a cell center. Flow cytometry method is coupled with a sorter. This cell sorter has a function to analyze the red and green fluorescent. All protoplasts which give the two fluorescent light, the red and the green, are selected in a vial and then transferred on a cartridge medium. 
So now the next step is the culture of the hybrid protoplasts. The hybrid cells can be cultured on the suitable medium provided with the appropriate culture conditions. For example, in the figure, it shows that the protoplast can be cultured in the liquid medium, solid medium, protoplast also can be cultured with feeder layer and co-culture of slow and fast growing protoplast. So now, we are at the last step, the technique, which is the regeneration of hybrid plant. Plants are induced to regenerate from hybrid cattle. These hybrid plants must be at least partially fertile in addition to having some useful property to be of any use in the breeding scheme. Okay, the figure shows the example of the regeneration of the hybrid plant. This figure also shows the green fluorescent protein based monitoring of plant regeneration from homo fusion valine cell orange and transgenic green fluorescent protein valine cell orange. It shows the development of the regeneration hybrid plant from the hybrid carrots. So that's all from us. We really hope that you will have a better understanding on this topic related to somatic hybridization and protoplast fusion hybridizations. Thank you!